Jerry Rosa here in the Rosa String Works Workshop. Today is Thursday, March 31st, I believe. Wow, where did this year go so far? I mean, where it's already a quarter over with. Just crazy. This is Layton. He's my very youngest grandchild and my youngest grandson, of course, then, because of that. And uh, he's Trinian's brother. He's here to help me inspect this base. We are moved to the outside of it. You can probably see there, I've done some work on the outside. It's, it's in the ugly duckling stage. It's looking worse before it looks better. So my friends, I thought I'd show you uh, how I got to this point where I'm working on the outside. The clips that you're about to see were filmed yesterday and they will show you, you know, the work I had to do to get to the point where I could start doing the outside work. Well, it's later on Wednesday, Wednesday afternoon. It was short sleeve weather this morning and now it's gotten cold again. <laughs> I think what I'm gonna do now, I've got all the cleats in there. I probably can't see them for anything, really. I'm gonna try to show you, but you probably can't see them because it's just almost impossible to see them and it's really hard for me to tell what I can show you. I think what I'll do is I'll try to get the uh, inside camera, the scope camera out later and we'll do something better but for right now that's what I can show you uh, maybe in a day or two when I'm just before I put this panel on we'll get the scope camera out. Anyway, I feel like everything is cleated and webbed on the inside, about as good as it can be. Someone did suggest using the web over that one brace, and that's maybe not a bad idea. I would definitely do that if it were not on the bridge plate itself. But I'm a little bit hesitant to do it on the bridge plate. So I think what I'm going to do now is turn my attention to the outside for a while and try to make it look better. We've still got quite a few eye issues, if you will. They're, I mean, structurally, you could string this up and play it right now. I don't think it would be a problem, but, you know, we want to try to make it as good as we can. The first area that's a problem is, well, I mean, this whole thing here is a little bit of a problem. But there's a fairly good crack here. I'm going to work on the bigger cracks first and work my way down to the fine detail. This crack right here is fairly large. It didn't close up all that well. So what I'm going to do is use CA glue and, and uh, you know, walnut sawdust, I believe, and fill these cracks and try to get them as smooth as I can. And we'll just see where that goes. I always think it's funny because people always say, save that sawdust, save that sawdust. Here's just one example of how quickly I can make sawdust. You know, I, I just take this one rough cut board, start running it through my thickness sander, and voila, I have all kinds of sawdust. And that's just in that little tiny length right there. So, you know, if I want sawdust, it's not a problem to produce. Okay, I know this isn't going to be the best shot for you, but I have this angled where I can see the crack the best. I know the camera cannot, but that's okay. Uh, we'll just do the best we can with what we got to work with here. I've got some extra thick CA glue here, and I'm going to start with that because this is a pretty darn big crack. And, you know, I mean, compared to where we started, it's not a very big crack, but when you get down to the fine detail of cosmetics, this is a pretty large crack. The CA glue, this is the extra thick stuff. And, and honestly, this has been sitting around for quite a while. So when extra thick gets to you, it's already, you know, on its way out. Uh, that's what extra thick glue is. It's just glue that's about ready to dry up. That's really what the boy, <laughs> that is the truth of it, you know. I think what it is, those companies sell their old glue as the extra thick stuff, and that's really what I think it is. I really believe that, because this, the extra thick never lasts very long at all, compared to the thin stuff anyway. Okay, well you can see there that I've got the glue, and now I'm just going to start trying to spread some of this sawdust into the glue. Once you get kind of that filled in like that, 
I'm going to spritz it with the CA, or I'm going to spritz it with the accelerator, just like that. And ain't nobody got time to wait for that to cure, because whenever you're waiting on it, it never cures. If you really wanted it to take a long time, it cures instantly, and that is a black and white fact. Okay, that's probably cured well enough. I'm going to try some 400 sandpaper to start with, and we'll see where we go from there. Well, I lied. I actually found some 320, and uh, that just happened to be handy, so I thought I'll start with that. It's, 320 is pretty fine. It's probably not fine enough to do our finish finish sanding, but for this rough sanding, I think it's probably okay. I don't know how this is going to turn out. I'm not going to film a lot of it. You can see what I'm doing and I'll show you what this looks like here when I think I'm as far along as I can go. I don't know if you could see the crack before, but it's, that's, you know, it's not terrible. Yeah, it's, it's not perfect by any stretch, but on the other hand, it's, you know, considering just minutes ago it was a pretty big crack that's not too bad here's some more of that rubber glove left over see if we can pick that out of there the uh, those rubber gloves were sticking to the glue and I got most of it out of the inside there's a one little spot I scraped and scraped and finally gave up on the inside but it's very minimal and one of my patches one of my cleats covered most of what was left. Still just the faintest hint of some of that in the inside, but not that much. Just about to get it all right here. Yeah, I think we got it all there now. Not sure what this is. Just some kind of residue of some sort. Okay, that's not looking that's not looking horrible. Just need to clean it up a little bit. This is uh, just glue right here and I thought I'd sand it lightly first just to see if we can get rid of most of the CA glue that's on the surface. And might have to uh, build it up with some CA glue and smooth it out. Taking this brush and cleaning the dirt dust out of the cracks so that that doesn't get glued down in there. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of cosmetics, just a lot of light filling like this, and uh, I'm just going to fast forward and show it to you in the camera when I feel like it's worth looking at. I think, but before I turn the camera completely off, I'll show you a close up of the before. And this is all the area that really broke out badly. And, you know, hopefully it's going to look better than this the next time you see it. That's about as much as I can tell you. I have uh, put CA glue on this big crack on the top. And I was sanding it, but I decided to go back to the uh, single edge razor blade with the tape on both ends. You can see I've put tape on both ends of the single edge razor blade. I left the middle exposed. That tape keeps you from scratching the top. It gives you just a couple of thousands inches of clearance so that you can scrape the CA glue down to the top without actually scraping the top. And so that's what I'm doing here. That works far better than sanding it really at least at the early stage. Of course, I'll still have to sand it a little bit when I get closer. But I'm just trying to get the cracks filled in and the finish more evened up. As I was sanding this, I can tell that this finish is some sort of an epoxy resin. Uh, I would say even based on the smell, it smells very much like a fiberglass resin. But it's some sort of a... Uh, 
a resin type finish and I'm not exactly sure what I can do to try to match any of that. I'm not a finish expert by any stretch. I'm more of a structural type expert if I'm anything. And this, it's going to be a real challenge to try to make it look really nice with, you know, I'm sure there's other people out there that could do a better job of that part of it. I'll just do the best I can. It's just about cleaned up here on the top now. I think maybe I'll just leave it at that for right now. Try going the other way and see if that smooths it off any. I did curl the razor blade edge just a tiny bit to try to uh, improve the cut. It seems to be working pretty well, but I think I think I'm down far enough now that I'm about as far as I can go with the razor blade on that. Yeah, I don't know. It's it's good and bad. I'll show you more as I make better progress. This area right here was extremely bad. This there was plywood in the inside of their reinforcement, and this broke away from that and it would not go back down flat uh, no matter what I tried. So there was quite a bit of a gap there, or quite a bit of a ridge there. I have filled it in with CA glue and sawdust. Now I'm going to do something that you're going to cringe at, but I'm going to take this sander lightly and I'm going to just touch this area to try to smooth it out. It's just too much to do by hand. I've been trying and it just doesn't want to cooperate. Of course, in one way it already looks better, and in another way it's the old ugly duckling thing. It's going to look worse before it looks better. Uh, but that's way better already in terms of the feel. Um, there's still quite a bit of unevenness there, and I'm going to use this a little bit more now that I feel that. That's pretty good. I can see a kind of a spot here that I'm going to fill in with some CA glue. Probably all of this actually. I may even just use CA glue as my finish because uh, it's really going to be difficult to match this finish anyway. It's not looking terrible, it's just the uh, sawdust turns darker than I wished it would, but there's not much I can do about that. You know, when you put something in there, it ain't it. It doesn't matter. Even if you use the same wood out of this same guitar, it wouldn't match. It never does. And that's not being negative. That's just telling you the truth. It just never does. And I mean, never does. I can see it wicking under here, so I'm going to keep putting it in here. I'm afraid it's going to be running down on the inside, though. So I think I'll spritz that lightly from a from a far away, and that'll let it set up pretty quickly and quit wicking down in there. I think and I'll try to fill the hole some more where it was wicking, and it's still probably wicking a little bit. I'm going to try to try to fill this one void where it keeps wicking in. Yeah, it's still wicking in there. I'm afraid it's going to look like a mess on the inside. I probably should look in there, I guess. Actually, you can't see it. So, 
I guess it's not that big a deal. I sure don't want it wicking, so I want to I want the hole to be full. And it's still wicking a little, but it's starting to fill up. Yeah, it's filling up now. Yeah, that did it, I think. Okay, well, yeah, it's, like I said, it has to look worse before it looks better. That's just the nature of finished type work like this. I'll do the best I can. But so many people have wanted to see a better look on the inside, so I have the bore scope here, and we're going to try that. And uh, if this is successful, we're going to switch over to the uh, bore scope camera and let you see it on the inside here. But so basically, it's just a camera here, if you see, and I'm going to point on the inside. So I'm going to use the bore scope in there, record it on this, hopefully, and then show you the result. So here we go. My friends, I think that's where we're going to leave it for today. I uh, hope you're enjoying these daily vlogs. I'm hearing from a lot of you that you do like the format. That way you get to see more videos. They're shorter, of course. I'm trying to keep them pretty much like the full-blown videos. I'm, you know, I'm still trying to give you plenty of detail for those of you who are trying to learn how to do this. I had a couple of questions come up so far on this uh, base repair. One of the questions that's come up a couple of times is why did you use Elmer's glue, this white glue, on the gauze rather than tight bond? Well the simple answer is either one would work just fine. What I don't think a lot of folks understand or realize is that Elmer's glue at one time really was about the best wood glue you could get. I mean back in I'm gonna say roughly the 60s Elmer's glue was used by furniture builders and everybody to build furniture and everything with it because it it was a very good wood glue. Probably the best wood glue there was at the time. It wasn't long after that. At the first wood glue I remember, I'm probably wrong on this as far as history goes, but the one I remember was Elmer's wood glue. They came out with a wood glue version of their glue. And, uh, I, you know, I'm sure Franklin and, you know, I don't know when tight bond came on the scene. I didn't look all that up. I'm just telling you that just for history purposes, Elmer's was a very good wood glue. So it makes sense to use it because it's also good at gluing, say, fabric and things like that. You know, it doesn't matter. I could have used tight bond, but I had that and uh, the gauze is white and, you know, and the, the Elmer's dries really clear where the uh, tight bond would dry kind of yellow. So I just thought, why not? And that's what I did. So we're going to just leave it there for today. Hopefully you'll join me on my uh, shop talk in the morning and uh, may we'll have a surprise or two on that. You just never know. So tell your friends, and if you have not clicked the subscribe button, please do so. Uh, you know, in case you don't know, if you click it a second time, you will unsubscribe. So you don't want to click it a second time. You only want to click it the once, and you just want to make sure that it stays clicked. Because uh, YouTube has uh, apparently unsubscribed some folks uh, by accident, or something has happened where they've been unsubscribed. So just every once in a while, just double check and make sure you're still subscribed. I'd appreciate it. Thank you so much. We'll see you tomorrow on the Shop Talk.